course, um, I'm never going to get through this one, but anyway, we'll have to do it. Um, <clears throat> we got time. <laughs> Jenna Katie. Jenna Katie. Um, he, came, you know, he came to that first talk. Well, no, he didn't come. He tried to get in for the first talk. Couldn't get in. It was too full. And uh, so my friend Rod and Angie were on the door with the Dharna bowl. And he said, no problem. So he just put money in the Dharna bowl and said, I'll come back next time. So off he went in. A month later, he did. He came to the next talk at the town hall. And uh, yeah, it really, the Dharma really caught him. And um, in a way, what an example of just one person catching the Dharma and then what he enabled. Because when he, 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 he was in our Sangha, uh, living around here for about three years, well, and then he moved to, he went to the London Buddhist Centre, helped out there, he went to Padmawoka, he helped out there, he um, looked after, he was caretaker of a Drasana retreat centre in Suffolk for a year. Um, he did enormous amount of work at Giroloka, uh, at the men's retreat centre out in Spain. Um, he was at Norwich for um, a time as well. He, he went and just helped and gave uh, to many people and, and, and many situations. Um, and uh, I know many people benefited from him. And also in the last sort of couple of years at Eastbourne, he lived in Eastbourne, and he was very involved with the Eastbourne group, but also with Rivendell. I mean, he used to go and help Naga City, he was the, the, uh, the main, I don't know what they call him out there, but anyway, he's ringed up in some sense. <laughs> and uh, helped him sort of with the fabric of the building and just, he was a very can do man, he had lots of energy and um, really gave to people just such a joyful, um, positive force actually in the world. And um, yeah, he, he, yeah he, at the end, he was. I mean, because nine weeks, he, he, well, he was in, in, in um, Bali and uh, found out that he'd got a brain tumour. And then nine week, weeks later, he died. And so we never know quite, you know, we don't know when, when we're off, do we? You know, we think we do in some way, but we don't. And, uh, but I haven't been particularly sad that he's died. And what I mean by that was he was in such good shape. He was so happy that he'd got the Dharma. He was so happy the life he'd had, that he'd enabled that in the last 10 years. And he was so happy with Satchimati. He was seeming really in love. It's like life was really all right for him. And it was something all right that it was the pinnacle. And, and now it was all right to slip off or something, you know? Um, so there was a sort of, and, and the way he, ha he faced death was exemplary beauty. It was just beautiful and karma. I couldn't, you know, he wasn't weighed down with it in any way. So um, I think, yes, that, well, I, I, I know that the Dharma helped that tremendously for him, but it was his application. It's our choices, isn't it? It's what we choose to do with our thoughts, with our actions, with our life. Um, yeah. So, yes. Bless this, whatever wherever he is now, whatever, however it happens. <laughs> however, whatever, who knows, it's a great adventure. And then there's already been mentioned about Jan being invited for ordination, that's really wonderful. And uh, yes, going off next month to Akashvana, the Women's Retreat Centre in Spain. Um, we'll come back, because who knows what, so exciting. <laughs> Looking forward to that, except I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be up a mountain in Spain as well. <laughs> forward to seeing you when I get back. Um, yeah, and I think one blessing, which is a huge blessing, is I didn't have to organise this event. <laughs> How wonderful is that? It's crazy, isn't it? The job keeping out of the way, but I did. <laughs> I didn't interfere at all. Um, so yeah, that's just some of some highlights. But of course, with anything, there's some low points. Um, I think one of the low points for me was definitely stopping classes at my flat. I felt a bit of a shock, actually, uh, that I had to stop. Um, 
But nevertheless, every, every difficult thing has a blessing. I, I totally believe that. And uh, we found Sheldon and just things opened up and started to realise that if we used a <coughs> wider range of venues, um, it attracted different people and more people. So we you know, had courses at the Astor and the lunchtime class here. Another painful thing I found was for me was, because what I've learned is, is the role I've been in, you can't please everybody. I've always wanted to please everybody. <laughs> and one of them was changing the name from the East Kent Buddhist group back to Dear Buddhist group. Uh, particularly, personally, in a way, didn't want to, but because there was a Canterbury group now, and they didn't, and they were in East Kent, and they wanted to be independent, I, I needed to change it back to Dear Buddhist group. But I know not everybody was, was happy with that. And, I did find that a painful time. Also, there's been six people in the last 10 years who I've had misunderstandings with, or they've had difficulties with the group in some way. And, um, you know, four of them are now, you know, very good communication with. Um, one of them I've, I've never seen since. I don't know where they are. And one of them I haven't had the opportunity of talking to yet to heal the situation. So I do feel the pain, you know, regret in relation to these good people. Um, but I'm also aware um, of how many people have been positively helped by Bante's presentation of Dharma and by being, you know, being made available in this corner of the world. And, uh, and you can't please everybody. But nevertheless, they, they, they still stick, sit in me. <laughs> uh, The next 10 years. So, a few words about this. Yeah, I want to encourage us not to settle down into a nice social group. We are a wonderful, friendly, and warm Sangha. It's remarked on often wherever I go and trap in the world, what a warm, friendly Sangha we are. And we are transforming ourselves in the world. We're not just trying to make our lives a little more comfortable, samsara a little more palatable. We are radically trying to raise the whole level of humanity's consciousness. That's what we're up to. That's the project we're all engaged with. To see with wisdom to feel with compassion, to treat each other with the highest respect, manners, courtesy, and care. So to treat the whole of life with kindness, to look after our planet, so all of life, all of life is sustained and raised to the highest level of consciousness possible. So that's what we're up to, on a good day. <laughs> um, and so for the next 10 years, we've got a wonderful team taking our group forward. As I step back from practical, financial and organisational running of the Deal Buddhist group, whilst remaining the chair, so, you know, many of you have generously been stepping forward sort of over the past few months to take on responsibilities to continue developing the spread of the Dharma in East Kent. So Philippa and Rich have taken on, agreed to coordinate activities in this area in relation with Manidara, Manidara and Jyotikari. Um, Philippa has happily said she'd be the treasurer of the charity when it's formed. Um, Jan is, is organising and has been for a while the leaders and themes at Sanganite, which has gone so well. And Marilyn on the beach and Julie Beach in Birchington and Ingrid, so ardently and dedicated to the lunchtime class. You probably, you probably, if you've been in town, you've never missed one, I doubt. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> and, um, Yes, and Manidara do, doing the Pali study 
and he's going to be secretary to the charity, as well as just agreed to be our safeguarding officer. Um, and Rachel, with the initiative of uh, Crafty Morning, Crafty Day, you know, I know lots of you have benefited, haven't you, Janet? <laughs> and uh, from those those uh, events, I mean, they're very popular, and uh, it's such a lovely aspect, you, dimension you've brought into the Sangha, Rachel. And then the going for refuge, one of the going for refuge groups organising the next Women's Morning, um, and. Clive and Rich organising the men's mornings, and, uh, and Jyoti Kari as our women's Mitch convener, which is wonderful that you step forward to take on that responsibility. It's really wonderful for our women uh, in Sangha. And Paul doing our Facebook uh, page and, uh, and the meetup when we have it, and Carol doing our archiving. Oh, okay. God bless you. Um, Oh yes, <laughs> doing her archiving, which had never been done in 10 years, but she's ardently been really working quite hard to uh, pull together photos and history and pictures of, of you know, posters and whatever. So that's great. Um, yeah, and, and, and has been, as has been happening for a while, is Daipashini Manidara leading Mitra study. Um, with in the future coming with support with Marilyn and Jan and Jenny, uh, which is great. And um, well, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to not have every faith in the Sangha here in East Kent. It will continue to thrive. It will continue to grow. Because I know how much it means to you. And that Tratner in the world will continue to be a force for the good. So bringing the, just the greatest gift, enabling consciousness to arise eventually in all sentient beings. Thank you. Mm -hmm.